Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. It yeah. says recording. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's dive in. Are you ready? Yes. So ready. Okay. All right. Well, I think uh, the most important thing that we should start with is like introductions. Yes. You Okay, Why don't so, you go first? <laughs> um, all right. So I am, my name is Jessica and I start, I was born with hypothyroidism. So um, I don't have Hashimoto's. However, I do and have suffered, I guess, with this illness for a very long time. And um, I didn't like growing up, I didn't really think about it much. Like I didn't really feel like it really held me back in any way. Like any, like when you grow up with an illness, like it just becomes your normal. So like, I always thought it was normal for everyone to have like no eyebrows, <laughs> like, like have their hair fall out. And like, I just like, and to always be tired, I thought it was just like normal. And then like, I also hmm. kind of thought that I was like handicapped or something. Like, I didn't think that, huh. not that I was like, I just, I didn't know that I felt slow. Like I wasn't dumb. Like I skipped a grade. I was very like, I, I was very, knowledgeable and really like eager and my sister and I were so close so I'd always pay attention to her lessons and I ended up moving up in school very quickly um but like I just like every time I would write down like anything I would I would always say like I have hypothyroidism but I didn't know what that meant um until I was about a teenager and I started really like going through puberty and like experiencing all these like hormonal issues and I felt like almost like bipolar, like my hormones were a mess going through um, puberty and all that stuff. My poor mom, my poor mother. <laughs> she, I she know, you poor thing, puberty is bad enough. <laughs> it was, oh um, and I mean, I wasn't horrible. I just, like, I was severely depressed. I was also bullied a lot in high school, but that's a little bit different than thyroid issues. But um I never really had any issues with weight, but I definitely noticed a difference in mood. And um, I started to um, study nutrition um, just to, just after high school. And I just remember Googling natural thyroid relief or natural thyroid hormones because I kind of was going down this more like holistic path. And um, I had read about armor and I was like why have I never heard of this why has this never been talked about and that just kind of <laughs> led me down this huge rabbit hole of giant rabbit hole must I add <laughs> of like natural healing and thyroid health and I was really kind of pissed off for a little bit because I didn't know about any of this nobody told me about any of this it was just very much like a general TSH test for my whole life and I finally started getting answers as to what was going on and then I paid to go see a doctor in Canada at the time and he was one of the first people to finally prescribe natural thyroid hormones and it completely changed the game and then he also gave me a book about iodine um, which I was telling you before, if your if your doctor gives you a book, he's a good doctor. <laughs> so That's a you good want doctor. Educated. Like you rarely have doctors that want you to know about your own illness and to educate yourself on your own illness and to take part in your own healing journey. So um, mm -hmm. at the time I did read the book. I didn't really quite understand it. It was kind of a little bit much at the time and I wasn't really focused. I was doing other things and studying other things. So I did read it though and it kind of made sense. And then um, I revisited it not long ago and was just mind blown at, at iodine and what it can do and how no one talks about it. And then it was funny because I've also read other books about thyroid health and it was very controversial because a lot of people were saying don't use iodine and then other people saying don't use the, the, you're probably getting way too much of it but then I had this doctor who was saying no we're not getting enough and like and I think that's where there's a lot of confusion with it and there's so much it's such a controversial subject but um just using common sense I feel like if you really like iodine is generally very important for your thyroid and if if we are having too much then there wouldn't be an epidemic of thyroid issues in this country and when I was growing up I didn't know anyone that had this issue and that's partly why I felt so 
like there was something wrong with me, but I didn't feel abnormal. I just kind of felt like different, but like I couldn't relate to anyone. And then as I got older, so many people started getting it and I started meeting hundreds and hundreds of people that just were either getting diagnosed or they were starting to become more like me, as you could say. And it was just like, okay, this is, this is an issue. Like, this is yeah. clearly like, I'm not the only one anymore, yeah. <laughs> at least, which sucks. I yeah. mean, I wish I was the only one, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's definitely an issue. Like it's becoming a really yeah. big problem. 20 million women have a thyroid issue. That's like one in three, I think was the last yeah. stat that I read. It's one in three, but yet so many women, like you said, feel alone. Mm -hmm. And, but yet so many women have it. And I think the reason why they feel alone is because of what you just touched on, the confusion and the lack of answers. It's like, it goes, the spectrum goes both ways. There's like too much information, but not enough information, not enough of the right information, I guess I should say. And so there's like an information overwhelm and it's just like, what do I do? I have no idea. Yeah. 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 So the fact and that confused. they just kind of like, they get all this information and they're like, I don't know what to do with it. Or, or they yeah. question it or their doctor says, Oh, don't do that. And they trust their doctor, but their doctor doesn't live with it. He doesn't know much about it. Even endocrinologists, many of them don't have thyroid yeah. issues or they've never experienced it or like, and I, I've talked to many people who went through med school and a lot of them are like, we don't like a lot of the students that go through med school are basically like, we don't really get to choose what we don't basically get to choose what we're good at. Like it just like, if, if they really? go through school, they are, say they're really good at like heart health then that's just kind of where they get pushed into. It's not because they're passionate about it. It's because that's just what they know and that's what they're good at. So it's like, even an endocrinologist, yes, they might be, they might know a lot about thyroid health, but unless you've experienced it and you know exactly like what you're doing and if you don't keep educating yourself, like there's stuff that comes out on a daily basis. And if you're not staying up to date, which many doctors are not because they're dealing with patients and they have their own personal lives and there's so much going on. Like a lot of doctors are very um, busy, you know, like, and then they're not going to want to go home and read more about thyroid health. Like I wouldn't do that if I was a doctor. I mean, yeah. I would probably, but at some point you just kind of <laughs> become overwhelmed and then mm -hmm. you have other things to deal with on top of, you know, the stress of being a doctor. It's not an easy, it's not an yeah. easy job. Right. Right. So, wow, you made so many good points. I'm like, oh, I want to speak to that. I want to speak to this, but I'm <laughs> trying to stay focused on iodine, <laughs> but that's why we're here. Okay. So, um, when I was in college, I had to just take a basic anatomy class for my um, degree, and I decided to pull out that, you know, like anatomy 101 book last night and just look at the endocrine system and the thyroid gland and see what it had to say about iodine, mm -hmm. and I wrote it down because I found it very fascinating. So I'm going to read it to you really fast because I know you're going to love it and you're going to want to speak to it. Okay. So it says, in order for the thyroid gland to produce thyroxine and triothyroxine, iodine must be available from the diet. If it's unavailable, the thyroid gland swells with fluid and an enlargement of the neck called a goiter occurs. Adding iodine to the diet will relieve the goiter or swelling yes that's like huge yes and what they so and that was one of like the medical like miracles of like this i think it was the 70s i think when they added um iodine to salt was it did help a lot of people that were experiencing goiter issues um but however like the amount of 
like iodine in salt is not enough anymore. Mm-hmm. Like with all of the toxins in our environment, it's just, and the, and also like the amount of people that just aren't eating salt that much anymore. Like, I mean, it's not like refined salt, like you're basically taking out all the nutrients and then re-adding iodine. But when you're letting that iodine sit there and then you open you open the bottle, most of that iodine's already evaporated and only about 10% of that, of whatever's left, is actually absorbable. So the amount that you're getting from salt, which refined salt, most people shouldn't be eating anyways, um, yeah. you're getting, you're not getting enough for your thyroid your thyroid alone needs like seven milligrams just to function correctly especially with like all the things that are happening in our environment especially with bromide and all these other things which we can get into a little bit later but um there's just so much that is it's constantly under attack of our thyroid and our other glandulars that any amount that you get from salt is not going to be enough to make It'll basically be enough to prevent goiter at the most, but it's not going to be enough to be sufficient for your everyday thyroid function. Right, right. And, you know, as a coach, um, I personally talk to people on my discovery calls that have swollen necks and or goiters and they don't understand and it's very uncomfortable for them. It's hard to swallow it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's hard to breathe and they are confused they go to their doctors the doctors don't tell them why they just want to you know mess with their thyroid medication it's just it's such i love what you said about the doctors don't really study the basics of what's going on they're just kind of pushed to what they're good at i mean i would imagine a doctor that's treating a number of people that have a thyroid issue they should simply know if there's swelling or something going on, let's check your iodine levels and see where you're at. And then if they're deficient, which most people are, they would think to supplement, but just not, it's, we're missing just that basic piece to the thyroid mm-hmm. illness puzzle. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really crazy too. And like, I don't, I don't necessarily go to a lot of doctors, not because I don't, really trust them but they're very limited with what they can and cannot recommend as well like it's really it's really unfortunate because I feel like you know everything is just like you can't make money on a natural supplement and most doctors will lose their license for even so much as suggesting another basically like any natural health products or any kind of, and not necessarily all of them, like a lot of them will recommend, like you can take calcium, you can take this or whatever, and that's all fine. But if you don't know about iodine, which most, and and that's the thing too, is that they teach in med school that iodine is toxic, especially at high levels because of really, really old, old studies that happened hundreds of years ago that wasn't even a good study to begin with. And that was originally why they stopped using iodine and so many different things. Like in the Hippocrates era, they used to use iodine for anything. They're like, I don't know what's wrong with you. Have some iodine. Like it, because it has, it has so many benefits between like it's antifungal, antibacterial. Like they use iodine in hospitals for cleaning because it kills mm-hmm. bacteria and viruses and all different kinds of things. So they wipe everything down with iodine to keep everyone safe from pathogens, especially when you're in the hospital for deadly things and you have a weakened immune system. So they use iodine for all those things. And it's like, okay, well, if it can do that to a surface, imagine what it can do inside your body. Like if you have bacteria, viruses, and candida, and all these other issues, iodine can fix that. Granted, there are certain types you don't want to eat because it is actually toxic and you don't want to do that. But that's what they used to use. They're like, I don't know what's wrong with you. Iodine will probably fix it. And that's what they gave you. And most of the time it works. So, and it went from using that for everything to, I'm not sure, like now it's just kind of like, I don't really know here, have a drug, but most of the time you have to take a drug and then you get another drug to help with the side effects of that one. And it's just this rabbit hole of pharmaceuticals that don't end up helping. But yeah, at the end of the day, oh, mm-hmm. you literally just hit the like nail on the head with everything that it that I wanted to like boil 
the amazingness of iodine down to, it's, it's not only essential for thyroid functioning, but iodine is a natural disinfectant. Yeah. It is a, it's affected, I'm sorry. That's it's okay. affected at killing viruses and bacteria. And I was gonna say that, that's why they rub it all over our bodies when they're getting this ready for surgery. Let me let my yeah. dog out of my room, sorry. Okay. No worries. What are you doing? Okay. The kids are running in and out of the house playing and he's getting all <laughs> hyper. Yes. So, you know, I was thinking back to my own exposure with this when I was in the hospital giving birth. What the first thing they do to you when they start prepping you to give birth is they lube up your whole entire undercarriage with iodine mm -hmm. because they're making that area like sterile and mm -hmm. safe for the baby to come out through yes. and you know so i love what you said like it is just so imagine if it if it is that well of a disinfectant on the outside mm -hmm. like you said imagine what it could be doing for us internally mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so we're all riddled with tons of bugs and everything that, you know, parasites and like you said, candida and uh, E. coli overgrowth and just all kinds of things that are wreaking havoc on us on the inside. And so imagine what iodine could do to that. And it just like obliterate everything. I love that. I didn't know in the past they used to use iodine for everything. That, that is fantastic. That speaks yeah. volumes right there. Just right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So iodine, it, you know, it can effectively reach when you, when you take it or you even put it on topically, it can reach the thyroid um, cells and it can, um, it can help like heal and fix what's going on with the thyroid um, at a really accelerated rate. Yes. And something that I learned that I didn't know about was, um, and you know, maybe you know, but I, I learned this is that iodine is so effective at healing us and like like killing off the bad the bad bugs and things going on in our body that you actually have to introduce it into your body slowly because yeah. um otherwise you could get um inflammation like a flare-up that feels like inflammation because it's doing its job so well it actually can make you feel like you're temporarily sick when really it's yeah. healing you Mm -hmm. Yes, that's really important because, okay, so when you take anything for the first time, it's always important to start slow, but because iodine has so, so it, it does kill bacteria, viruses, and it can create inflammation because it's pushing all these things out of your system. And also what people typically find when they take iodine the first time is their TSH rises which can freak them out because they think that, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. my TSH is up. I mean, I must be like not reacting well or have an allergy or blah, 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 blah. But it is normal for when you start taking iodine for the first time that it can raise your TSH up like a lot for about six months before it goes back down to normal. Because if you're deficient in anything and you start taking it, it's like, it's kind of like shakes your system a little bit, but there are like, and that's the thing like with iodine too, like you never want to just start taking it. It's really important to not overwhelm anything. Like iodine has cleating properties. So it will clate to bromide fluoride, which are um, both other halide minerals. Um, and it pushes it out of the system. Um, and then also it has all these antifungal, antibacterial, all these things. So what happens is when you start detoxing all this stuff, it pushes it all out of your system and that creates, um, it can create, sorry, oxidation, which can create inflammation. <laughs> sorry. So it's well, important. What I, yeah. And it's, what I read too is, is that can be mistaken as an autoimmune response. But yes, really, or it can be like, mistaken as an allergy as well. People yeah, I mean, it makes allergic sense. to it because they have a bad reaction, but it's not because of the iodine. If you literally need iodine to survive and live, 
However, you can have a bad reaction to it. And that's why it's so important to either work with someone who knows what they're doing with iodine or um, which, to be honest, I don't know many people that do, but um, also to make sure you're supporting your system, like make sure you're drinking enough water, make sure you're getting your vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, which will help with the oxidation, um, your B vitamins, you're making sure you have enough salt and other things. And I just want to touch on bromide quickly because it's super important. And so tradi um, traditionally with bread, um, they used to use brom or sorry iodine in flour and flour products. And since that study that I was talking about earlier of, of this doctor that put out this study saying iodine is toxic, people were freaking out thinking they were getting too much iodine and that they were all going to get autoimmune issues. And it was this huge thing. So they replaced iodine in bread, which you used to get your RDA, which was 150 micrograms of iodine in two pieces of bread. So if you're having six or eight pieces of bread a day, which many people were, they were worried that they were getting too much. So they replaced that with bromide, um, which is a dough conditioner basically. And that's what iodine was too, was a dough conditioning agent, but they replaced that with bromide. And bromide is a toxic halogen mineral that pushes out iodine from your system as well as fluoride, which is what they added to your drinking water, which everybody knows about. Um, that also pushes iodine out of your system and takes up space on iodine receptor sites in your system. So what happens when you start taking iodine for the first time is it pushes the bromide and that fluoride out of your system, but that can create like, it's weird. It can either make you really, really lethargic and very exhausted, or it can, which can trigger like a Hashimoto's like flare up, especially when you're not taking it with support nutrients or with selenium or something like that. But it can also trigger, um, like it just, it can almost make you go crazy. Like it's weird. It like gives you this like madness feeling and it, it's not a fun like experience. And that's why it's so important to make sure you know what you're doing before you just take any mineral, not just iodine, but you don't want to crash your minerals because it can be, it can not be a good thing. Like it can take a long time to recover from that. So you want to start very, very slow. Um, and by slow, I mean like a drop if that at like at one time and do that for a couple of days after you take your support nutrients and do like a salt loading protocol and um traditionally what they would use to get rid of bromide in your system was take a lot of salt not table salt um hmm. actual like um salt like pink himalayan salt or something like that and that would actually help get rid of bromide as well so if you're experiencing a symptom a detox symptom of bromide then salt can be helpful to get it out of your system and detox it faster. Interesting. I've never heard of bromide. Is that listed as an actual ingredient? It's anywhere? not because technically anything that is less than 4% is um, not, you don't have to legally list it. In some countries you do. And in many countries they stopped using bromide because they realized how toxic it was. It's definitely one of the most toxic substances and I don't know why it's legal. It's illegal in Canada to use it in a in flour, but it is not in the U.S. So, um, however, I have seen, and I was super super excited. Like a little nerdy me was totally nerding out. But I went to Sprouts and I was getting organic flour, and I noticed that there were some that said unbrominated flour, and it was very exciting mm -hmm. to to see that there are things that are being made without bromide. So there is unbrominated wow. flour out there. However, in most traditional bakery products, and also if you were to buy bread or go have bread from something like a store or any kind of like bakery product, it is in all traditional flour and commercial flour products. So any like pastas, grains, like anything that is basically refined flour will have bromide in it and that will have an effect on your system and part of me thinks that i mean maybe gluten isn't necessarily necessarily the cause 
of a lot of issues with thyroid health because I know a lot of people that can have gluten without having an issue, but it could be a high possibility of the bromide that they're reacting to and not necessarily the gluten that they're reacting to, especially if they're already severely deficient. Wow, I have never heard of that before. That is like interesting. I mean, To gluten, I mean, celiac disease is like spiked. Like gluten is, you know, and like the mainstream media and everyone makes fun of it. Like, oh, gluten free, gluten free, and it's like, well, you haven't felt what it's doing to you. Like, if yes. you are sensitive, but that totally makes sense. I thought it was just more like GMO because it was like so toxic from the GMO seeds that they're. That is very possible. I'm not sure what happened to your um, your audio. <laughs> I can kind of hear you. I don't know what happened to it though. But um, yeah, I mean it's possible. I've heard of glyphosate as well. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, my boyfriend turned on the Bluetooth speaker and it connected our video to the Bluetooth. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, no, no. he showed okay. me like, hey. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> no, so I just so missed what you said. No, I mean, I, well, I was just answering Wait. your thing oh, about, yeah. um, about, um, blue, well, sorry, I was going to say Bluetooth. I thought your thing about, um, GMOs, which is very possible, like 100%. I do think that GMOs and glyphosate are really, really, really toxic, especially for mineral balance, which um, we've talked about before. We'll probably talk about it another time because that's a whole nother, whole nother ball game. But um, I know yeah. that that can also have an effect, especially with detox, and that can also affect your thyroid levels too. So I mean, I do think that gluten is not necessarily something that most people want to eat, especially like modern wheat, but I do also think that bromide is another huge thing that most people overlook when it comes to thyroid health because they don't know about bromide and how toxic it is and how much we're getting exposure to it. It's not just in flour either. It's in like, um, you know, like flame retardants in your furniture. It's in like Mountain Dew and soft drink products. It's in... Um, like your pharmaceutical drugs, like you're getting so much exposure to bromide. And that's why iodine is so important because it, it will keep that out of your system or at least keep it from having an effect long-term on your system. And that's why like, I, f I feel like we need such higher amounts these days because like we're not, we're getting so much exposure to fluoride and bromide, but we're not getting any exposure hardly all to iodine unless you're taking high amounts. Yeah, I... I mean, it totally makes sense. I um, know that uh, we lose iodine from carbonation, caffeine, mm -hmm. corn syrup, refined flour, um, ongoing excess uh, adrenaline going through our system. And um, I mean, think how many people are ingesting carbonation, caffeine, corn syrup, and refined flour every day. Like, that's the staple yeah. of the American diet. Yes. That's like a McDonald's, mm -hmm. that's like a McDonald's meal, all those, you know, <laughs> okay. and, and they, and each one of them mm -hmm. strips out your iodine. So yeah, this is a huge, yeah. huge deficiency that people aren't aware of. Um, so tell me what you think about this. I was reading that iodine um, is, you can, your body can only hold and store iodine if it's used in conjunction with zinc. Do you know about that? I have heard that. And I think that it's important to have, I'm not sure if you can hear me or not, but um, I can, um, Yeah. I have You're heard that. Talking, and I think that I that's why you froze. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh-oh. Um, I think that's why it's so important for men on zombies in general. Uh, hold on. Let me go get my... Can you, like, not play for a minute? Because it's affecting the Wi-Fi. Like, can you turn it off? I promise I'll be done soon. <laughs> okay, sorry. I don't know if that's better. Um, okay, so I think that's Maybe why it's, yeah. it's so important to focus on like mineral health as a whole. Um, I know that zinc is one of the only minerals that is not stored in your body, so you have to make sure you're getting it every day, and it is really important. Um, for a variety of reasons, but also for any kind of like, it's, it's <laughs> important for anything, especially like protein and enzyme function and like healing your gut and healing in general. Like zinc is the healing mineral. So it's, um, it's really important that you have enough zinc every day. Um, I also know that um, iodine seems to work a lot better with selenium because selenium is also one of those minerals that is very, very important for thyroid health. But, and I always notice the difference when I take iodine with selenium, like I feel like it genuinely works better. But um, I haven't heard specifics about zinc and iodine together. I think that I'll have to do some more research on that, but I haven't heard of it yet. Well, I'll, I'll uh, show you where I got it from. Um, I wanted to back up really fast. Oh, you're frozen. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I, I wanted to back you. up really fast yeah, and know. talk about dosing fish. Okay. I said I wanted to back up really fast <laughs> and just talk really fast about dosage. Can you hear what happened? Okay. I don't know. My my whole thing is really so frozen. I can hear you fine, but the picture just gets choppy. So if you want to just keep talking, I can still hear you. Uh oh. Oh, I can you're back. You now. I just, I think I'm broken. That's so. all. Okay. That's okay. There we go. Okay. Cool. Um, I really wanted to ask you a little bit more about dosages, and I did hear you mention that the it's good to work up to seven milligrams a day. Can you hear me? Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. I'm going to end the recording and call you on Instagram really fast. No, you're super frozen. I'll call you on Instagram okay. really fast. Okay. Okay.